right, I'm still at a cemetery, I keep finding different areas of it. Here we've got a little bridge going over a small stream that meanders down there into a... You can hear it trickling as well. With um, wild garlic. I expect this could be an area where people can have their ashes scattered maybe or something, I'm not sure. But it comes off it comes off that little bridge and um, takes you around. And you probably join up again. It's probably another little area where I should imagine this is where ashes are scattered. Very nice idea actually. A little path in a little glade. There's lots of little babies and children. Zara, the other side there. Like I said, this is a massive graveyard. I never expected it to be this big. I really didn't. This is, uh, oh, wow. This is bigger than Milton Road. I mean, it's just massive. And I keep finding lots and lots of related names. Um, I could really do with a burial plot, really. Um, but it's not as if I can just pop back, you see. It's not as if I can just pop back. See, it's, it's just go. Look, it's just so massive, isn't it? All I'm doing is scanning at the moment. This is taking me, this is going to take me just an hour just to walk around it without doing any detailed um, examination. And I keep coming across people, isn't there? Critchley here. Michael John Critchley, a loving husband, son, and brother, born 21st of February 1978, died the 16th of May. 2011. Now, was he a soldier? Looks like he could have been a soldier. Look, I'm not quite sure what that badge is. And he was the same as just Jolene. That um, that was three years ago. So he would have been about 33 when he died. So I expect he was a soldier. And just doing the odd little video, a series of lots of little videos that I'm doing. One minute you see some people and then you look up and they've gone. It's really, it is weird. They suddenly disappear. There was somebody here a minute ago. They were strimming and then they've, they've gone. They've completely gone. So anyway, I'm not doing, I'm not doing it thoroughly. This is what I call a scan. Because these will only be people with shared ancestors. These are newer, you say. But the name, we're looking for the name, really. It certainly is big. Like I said, I was surprised. I mean, it might be as... Milton Road might be this big. You can't always tell when you first get somewhere. You get... Well, no, I think, it's, I think this is bigger. It's got a massive old section. It really, really has. So I'm at a place called, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's either Chorley or Corley or something like that, up in Lancashire. Not that far from Southport, from Liverpool, from Croston, where I'm based. And I've uh, managed to bring my computer, get it going. I'm going to do more on the internet tonight. I forgot I should have done some double checking, really. Um, I've managed 
managed to do some discs. I managed to save everything I'd done so far. Obviously I'm not today. And um, start getting it stored on the discs. You see? Now that looks like the probably the caretaker's office, I should imagine. I'm going to go up that way in a minute. I just wanted to come along here. Because I did see a couple of old graves. That might be worth looking at. The newer people, they could be related, but um, they share the name as opposed to we don't think about them. We just come up to this plaque here. And places do have names that are only common to their area. And Baxendale is an unusual name for it. I've never seen one in Somerset ever. I've never seen one in Somerset. So I'm just going to do this little bit here. Just going to walk up into the central bit. And then I'm going to go back down and up that way. I think it shuts at five o'clock. Oh, it's right. you, you can get locked in if you've got a car, apparently. It's a shame, really, that they have open in the evenings for people, especially, I mean, in the summer. Maybe they do. I expect people can still get in. It looks like they've got a, a proper warden. They've got a proper warden. See the name Walsh, William Walsh, 1901 to 1931. That's um, a family name. Somebody married a Walsh. Now here we have a Critchley look, in love in memory of Mary, the beloved wife of Thomas Critchley, who died September the 21st, 1938, aged 55. But we've got no name for him there. But he could still be alive. Although I should imagine he's dead because it was been the 18th century. So everywhere I look, the names come up, particular to this area. Obviously, Smith, Wood are common to everywhere. We know that. So there's a Howe here. Here we go. We're, we're, we just do this one. We've got Betsy Howe. She died March the 10th of 1957, aged 67. So she was around in the turn of the 19th century. Thomas Howe, husband of the above. He died November the 19th. 1962, age 78. Then another Thomas, son of the above, he died January the 30th, 1937, age 28. Then we got some Livesleys, son-in-law, and Eliza Livesley, um, parents, and Alice Howe, 1995, age 77, Bert Howe, 2002, age 87. So the names keep on coming. This is what I'm trying to say. You have shared... I've just turned around, there's another one. You have many shared ancestors. Look, John Baxendale died April the 27th, 1940. Also Mary Alice, his wife, died September the 17th, 1928. Also William, their son, died December the 7th, 1937. Baxendale. Every time I turn around, I find, I, I, I see one. There's squirrels in here as well. Look, look I come over here, this one here. Look, John Howe. John Howe died 25th of December 1898, age 58. He could be related, he could be a, a relation. That's what I said every time he turns, or just people that could be related to you. I only just done a little scan round then, I came across that one. I literally did tw tw 360 degrees and found somebody every time I turned. Right, I'm going to turn off, take some photos.
just another small video of this massive cemetery.